I do want to ask people ahead of time, Scottsdale has not scheduled us for a class session next week, Wednesday. And I am assuming that is simply because it is the day before Thanksgiving and, they and nobody would come. <laughs> are, well, right. A, people wouldn't come. B, people are, are cooking or baking. C, people are traveling to see family or cleaning their houses or what have you. So am I safe in assuming that there's nobody who has a burning desire to do Wednesday? <laughs> Yes, <laughs> we have no burning desire. Okay, okay. Correct. Yes, yes, Susanna. Okay, okay. So I will not. So I know it, it feels very weird for me to tell you our next session is December 1st. How is that right? But it is because November 30th is a Tuesday. So Wednesday will be December 1st. Mm. So I know that sounds really, really, really weird. Um, but you know what? I will definitely send you with some things to listen to. And uh, okay, so tonight is in part, I do want to get some feedback from you guys. Now, some of you have started to give me some feedback already um, on what you thought of a couple of things. And one of them was harder. One of them was very easy, but I want your feedback Aside from that, we are going to do our little things on Parecer. Did it go better on Parecer this week? Yes. Yes. Mucho mejor un poquito. Is it only a little I'm better? Or? I'm still confused about when you use day or K or poor or none of the above. Ah. Yeah. Don't sweat that too much right now. Um, Good. <laughs> well, no, seriously. Um, um, you know, there are um, uh, uh, th this whole thing of prepositions can bog you down to the point of it blocks you getting out the basic idea. Mm -hmm. And the basic idea is using parecer and is it a reflexive or is it used just by itself or is it saying something seems this way? to somebody, to somebody, in which case you can add a little pronoun, okay? And uh, mm. we'll take some baby steps to, uh, you know, get you into the individual practice. And, and I'm, I'm showing you this because this is a page you're gonna need, whether you pull it up as a file or as a printout page, we absolutely are going to get to this today. Um, but the one thing I will tell you that is maybe important to know if your question, as Karen had mentioned, that whole thing of K, a lot of times you will notice that sometimes we do use K and it's not a preposition, it's just the word K. And there the word K is not the word what as in asking a question, but it means that. And it seems that something is happening. Whenever we have parece que, that means whatever comes after que is a mini sentence by itself. Like, uh, parece que hace mucho viento. It seems like, you know, we would say in English, it seems like, or we might say it seems that it's going to be windy. Okay. But it's windy is a separate standalone that could theoretically stand by itself as an honest to goodness sentence. So when you hear parece que, parece que, in general, you're going to have a mini sentence because que is introducing a clause. And whenever you hear that in Spanish, que is introducing a mini sentence, what we call a clause that tells me that somebody is doing something or something is happening, okay? So knowing that que may follow parecer is maybe a good thing to know, okay? Um, bien, but we will come to that. Did it help for you to start the video, do segment one and then pause and mm -hmm. figure some yeah. things out in segments? <laughs> See, mejor, better? Ma mucho mejor. Okay. And, and, and I'm going to say my bad, folks, that I probably should have spelled out that that was the way I envisioned it. 
um, you know, it is not a good thing for me to say, this will be obvious because it isn't always. <laughs> and, you know, for me to think as I'm going along that what does not make it so, does not make it so. So um, it was good to me that you communicated those issues because I thought of, oh, how should we break it down? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Magnifico. And I am just going to enlarge this for a very short period of time so you can see it. These guys are all brothers. For later on, when you get to that part, these guys are all brothers. They all make a lot of money <laughs> because they're famous actors. They're famous actors belonging to an acting family. Uh, I maybe, uh, and it's hard for me to get a family thing where people do look quite a lot alike. Uh, the 30 and 20 somethings all are like, you know, drool quality over one or all of these guys. Okay. Yeah, my daughter's, oh, the Hemsworth brothers. <laughs> and even the, even the males, my son would be, oh, the Hemsworth brothers. <laughs> Everybody knows them. Well, maybe everybody doesn't, but a lot of people do. Okay. Uh, primero, primero. First, I want to get some feedback. I'm going to pull this up so you can see it because this will not require me to do any walkthrough whatsoever. What did you guys think of this? Um, if, if you tried it, and if you didn't try it, do so this week. But this little thing called language transfer that really starts from assuming you know nothing, but works in a very natural way with Spanish. Was that a, a generally a thumbs up or yeah, so-so? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was good. Um, I, I, looking at it from one point of view, from the point of view of somebody who structures, how do you teach something? It is extremely well thought out. This man worked, I will tell you, a very long time planning and sequencing how he was going to present the ideas in this game. Yeah. Okay. See? Mm -hmm. See. Uh, it is nice and slow. I'm going to tell you his student has an exceptionally good. <laughs> his student <laughs> is not a beginner. <laughs> is exception, exceptionally uh, attuned audially. Hmm. Her, her pronunciation is almost, it is dead on. Mm -hmm. So how much coaching she actually had going into that, I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna assume though that she had not a lot, but I'm also gonna assume she is someone who has studied languages, something else before. Mm -hmm. Because it, I, I have a sneaking feeling that was just awfully easy. Okay. Uh, the only thing her, I noticed, the only thing I noticed was one lesson runs into the next. And if you're listening with your eyes closed, you don't know how many lessons you've done. You yes, know, it's like, Whoa. yes, there, right. There is not a nice mark break now starts episode two. Yeah. They don't do that. So they do run together, but they, you, they do tend to be between seven and maybe 10 or 11 minutes at the most long. Um, and, and you can, and some of you did notice you can download them. Do know you can put them on YouTube. However, uh, do know that with you, you're not going to get to see what the people look like. They do not, even on YouTube, ever show you what the uh, people speaking look like. So you won't get like an extra boost from like reading their lips or anything like that because you won't see a face. Okay. So I will say to you, if you're enjoying that, just work it through. And actually it's going to be part of my homework to pick up that episode. I don't know, eight or nine, wherever it was that I left off and see exactly how far he gets with that. But uh, it's a very good natural method and very slow and very easy to follow. Okay. Fantastico. We will talk about our uh, video later, later, but I just want to get a feel from you first real quick thing. Uh, the video with David Yanna about uh, inviting people. Mm -hmm. They do, now I'm gonna tell you, they speak middle to slow. They speak, I, that's scary, isn't it? <laughs> it is, because I put it at 75%. <laughs> they they speak middle to slow. 
Wow. I mean, I don't put, I don't put captions on when I listen to them ever, yeah. ever, because they don't slip and start going, you know, um, they, they stay very in pace. And so, um, you know, only, I think the only time I have turned on closed caption was when there was some special term they used that was a new term that I was not familiar with. But it is closer to a natural rate of speech. So I will say this, it is faster than destinos, it is way faster than language transfer, uh, but um, it, it is a good and useful tool for you to start to step up your game with listening a bit. So I want us to try a few of their videos and, and be patient with yourself with it. Your objection or your, your objective, you may have many objections. <laughs> your objective when you listen to the How to Spanish podcast is to get the gist and to be a sponge and just absorb as much as you can. Your job with listening to that podcast or the, to their YouTube channel is not to understand every single word as they are saying it. It's my job, but it's not your job. Uh, and I have some tools that are going to help you. And I am picking simpler episodes. So do know if you found it fast and somewhat scary, just let it go and try to go for the gist. We are going to do, I hope we will have time to do some little walkthrough things with that after we get done with our parecer and uh, preocupar practice. Okay, see, sí, Patricia. It seemed that Anna was like, she didn't have a lot of inflection or intonation in her voice. You know, she just sort of like running on and yeah, on. Yeah, everything was just I kind of in trouble to figure out when she's starting and stopping. Whereas David was very, you know, easy to understand or more easy. Maybe he didn't say as much. It's is interesting. She is, is actually, she is, uh, well, is it normal? Yes. <laughs> what I would expect to be. Is normal. Okay. I was wondering. He I better... actually goes slower than a typical native speaker because this is something, and she teaches, she teaches Spanish to English speakers. Okay. Um, whereas he really does not. I think he's more of a techie guy, although I don't know exactly. Um, I am getting to know some of the things that they do a little bit better. I joined the a session of theirs last night. Um, and, um, uh, but they pick very interesting topics that are of general interest so that you have interesting things to listen to that anyone could talk about. So our objective with those, moving into something different with listening, will be to get the gist and to start to start to get comfortable with just getting the gist, but maybe not understanding every single word. In a lot of cases, I will be able to get you transcripts. Mm for these because I have signed up for that. Mm, okay. Yeah. So that will help you. So when I send you the link for that, I'm also going to send you um, in the recaps, a link that will have uh, the transcript. That was helpful. So that you can either pull it up on the screen or print it out and to follow along. Okay. And I'll show you later on after we're done with practice tonight a little bit of how uh, some of the transcripts also work, not 100% of them because the newer ones are a little bit more just straight written transcripts, but the older ones actually are karaoke style, which you'll see what I mean. Marilyn, I wanted to say, yeah, the thing you sent, we printed it out. And for me, having, having this really helped me distinguish when they were changing general mm -hmm. topics yeah they would say next and oh yeah, uh, yeah. but sometimes if i it wasn't on. Yeah, yeah i i really needed the paper to go okay this is another way to say it this is more of an opinion this is about what do you think this is let's go for but without the paper it kind of blends in my head. Okay, and we're gonna talk about that when we're done with our parecer. Mm, okay. Spiel. Yeah, 
we're going to talk about that. But this was um, this was tremendous. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I will I will provide you with the scaffolding. I I have I am now subscribed so that I will be uh, sent transcripts because I could sit and type every word they're saying. But do I really <laughs> have that many hours in the day to type no. this? No, no. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm not. No, no. I don't have that much time. Yeah. I already had to start on the beer. What a day I had. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. If you knew the day I had today. God. Just shoot me now. Okay. Bueno, vamos a empezar. Vamos a empezar con, con algo para, para practicar, algo para entrenarnos en los oídos, something to train our ears before we go off into actual practice. So we're going to take uh, some of these little snippets. I have to see which way I go here. Uy, a ver. Oh, I don't, I can't make it bigger. Okay. Um, we're going to step through this segment together and you're going to hear again, not just parecer, you're going to hear a variety of these verbs that are like parecer, that are like gustar and all of that. And they'll ask us, they will ask you to either guess what something means or figure out, you know, which of the two uh, options is right with a verb form or a pronoun or something like that. Pero es una historia. Es, es el uso de verbos como gustar en el contexto de una historia. De, de algo que tiene, que sigue, que sigue un tema lógico. ¿Entienden? And it's going to follow a logical theme, okay? And hook these all together. Now, in a normal conversation, you wouldn't necessarily be able to put all kinds of verbs like gustar together in this many connected sentences, but they made a very good effort to do this. Okay, <laughs> vamos a ver. Es, ooh, this is the same guy from the messy divorce last week. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you're gonna see he, had, él tiene un trabajo, ese señor que estaba discutiendo con la, la, la ex esposa, sí, de, de la custodia de, de la niña, él tiene un trabajo y está hablando con, con dos empleadas, más o menos, en su trabajo. ¿Bien? Ok. Hola, chicas. ¿Cómo van? ¿La idea de grabar un disco juntas? Ah, bien. Emocionar. ¿Qué quiere? Hmm, en inglés, ¿qué diríamos? What would we say? Para Be excited. Be excited, yeah. Because emocionante quiere decir. Sí, I don't know if it's just me, but it's really fuzzy on my screen. Is sí, it? es fuzzy. No, sí, no. no that's okay here. Okay, okay it, here. It's okay, not here. super crisply okay. focused, but it's fine. Okay. Bien. Uh, emocionar no es be emotional mm. with all the baggage that comes with that in English. Emocionar es to excite to get you enthused, to get you pepped up in a good, en, en una buena manera, bien? En una buena manera. Okay. ¿Cómo van? How are things going? And he's, oh, he's asking, are you excited about or are you psyched up for the idea of, oh, grabar. Grabar es, grabar. Record. 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 Grabar es record. Are you excited about all oh, recording a record? Together. Together. Como se dice? Le se emociona. Yeah. Le, y, le y que dice uh, que la idea de grabar, la idea okay. de grabar un disco juntos. Le se Les emociona. Mm -hmm. Les emocionan y les emociona. That one. Les emociona. Les emociona. Les emociona. 
Bien, sí. Entonces, ya me apetece grabar, Miguel, pero no estoy segura de si grabar juntas es lo ideal. Uh, already. You could, oh, look. Mira la cara y mira la cara. Muy calma. Hmm. Y, ah, qué horror. Mira la cara aquí de la mujer a la izquierda. ¡Ay, qué horror. Y, uh, y ella, <ríe> es mi opinión. Ok, me apetece grabar, Miguel, pero no estoy segura de, de si grabar juntas es lo ideal. Me apetece es... I feel, I feel, like, I feel like, like I feel like recording, Mike, but I'm not really sure if recording together is the, the ideal thing. Mm. Cuando, cuando, ustedes, cuando ustedes escuchen lo ideal, lo ideal es the ideal thing. Mm. O en este caso, diríamos the best. Mm. Sí, ok. Bien, ok. Uh, aquí. A mí me gusta con solitario. Ah, fascinaría, me fascinaría. Ah, uh, that's a, a conditional. So they're saying, would be fascinated by. Ok, a mí, I'd love, and they don't use encantar because this is just a different way of saying, I, I'd be fascinated by this, meaning, yeah, I really want to. Ok. Uh, un disco en solitario. Me fascinaría. Okay. Me fascinaría. You need a singular. Sí, Juan. ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué singular? Un disco. Un disco. Un disco. Ok. Uh, I'd love a solo record. Ok. Is there an accent on that Chicas. last I? Sí. Oh, okay. Plata. La discográfica está en problemas. Ah, cuando dice plata, plata refiere, plata refiere a, a, a dinero. Ah. A dinero. Plata quiere decir silver, pero aquí no es silver. Plata es jerga. It's a slang. Plata significa dinero. Dólares, pesos, euros, bolívares, lo que sea, whatever it may be, right? Whatever monetary unit it may be. Okay, chica, una vez más. Y faltar is to lack. Yeah, money. Do not have. Chicas. Plata. La discográfica está en problemas. Ah, me falta. Me falta. Me, me falta. ¿Por qué? Why? He doesn't have them. Yeah, he's saying I'm lacking funding. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the record business, discográfica, discográfica. Uh, the rec recording business is experiencing some problems, right? Okay. Me falta. Me hacen falta más fondos para grabar dos discos. De momento solo hay plata para un disco. Ah, fondos son funds. A quantity of money. Funding. Fun. Más fondos para grabar dos discos. Okay. And he's saying, you need I, I need more funding to record Right. De momento solo have... hay plata para un disco. Right now there's only money for one. One. Okay. ¿Cómo se dice? Me hacen falta o te hacen falta? Me hacen falta. Me hacen falta. Mm -hmm. Me hacen falta. Okay. Yeah, he. ¿Y por qué? Y momento. Me hacen falta because it was fondos. Funds. F-U-N-D-S. Oh. Bien, ok, like, es como gustar, ¿no? Ok, una vez más, perdón. La recepción de un disco conjunto por parte del público, Miguel. 
ah, I'm afraid of how conjunto. Me da miedo. Me da miedo. Yeah. Ah, me da miedo. It gives me fear. Yeah. It's a different way to say I'm scared. I'm afraid. Me da miedo. Uh, I'm afraid of how it will be received a, a recording together. You know, un disco conjunto, a, a record together or recording together por parte del público, on the part of the public. I'm afraid the public isn't going to take this well. Me da miedo. Okay. Valentina, ¿a ti no te importa que tu primer disco no sea en solitario? Ah, something like no te importa. Mm. Yeah, she's asking her a question and you've got the a ti leading off. No me... So the a ti is a giveaway that it's going to be. No me... A ti no te importa que tu primer disco so sea en solitario. Bien. Cantar. Y prefiero hacerlo en solitario. Me gusta. Me gusta, sí, me gusta me cantar. Gusta. Y prefiero, and I prefer to do it on my own, right? En solitario, as a single, okay? Vale. Sin embargo, también, un disco contigo, Paulina. Ah, sin embargo is nevertheless. Me interesa. Me interesa. Me interesa. Ah, ah. Uh, a record with you, contigo, Paulina, mm -hmm. uh, is interesting to me. Not right. La gira juntas. Tanto. And a gira is a tour. Yeah, a record tour, yeah? La gira juntas. Mm. Mm. So they've toured together before because she, they put this in the past. It says yo perform. Um, yeah, yeah. Ah, gira, the tour. Yeah, yeah, and even though you don't know, it's got to be a singular verb. Uh, the tour together was very fun for. Yo. Not I had a good time on tour, but the tour was was mm. fun for me. 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 Okay. Te encantó el contacto con los fans, ¿no es cierto? You loved. Oh, you just you loved. You loved. You loved. You loved. You loved. You loved. Yeah. You loved. 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 You Escuchen la diferencia entre encanto. Oh, okay. Encanto. 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 It happened to me. It was delightful for me. Okay. Or for you. En este caso. Te. Te. Sí. Bien. Uh, you loved. Okay. Sí. Los fans me agradaron tanto. Fans love. Sounded like Mirar. <laughs> It didn't agradar. Yeah. Play it again. Play it again. Okay. Sí, los fans me agradaron tanto. Yeah. Me agradaron. The important thing is we're talking about los fans. 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 Right. Yes. And any verb ending in an N is going to be plural. Right. No matter what the tense is. Mm -hmm. So, me agradaron. ¿Y a ti, Paulina? Los conciertos. Apasionarse, have a passion for, you know. Uh, apasiona. Te apasionan, because it's conciertos. Claro, El contacto con mi público. She didn't look that thrilled, does she? <laughs> claro, <laughs> Miguel. ¿Cuál es? ¿Me encanta o me encantan? Me encanta. Me encanta. Okay. And whenever you hear this, I'm going to bring this up more than one time. Me encanta is going to sound like that. It's never going to sound like me encanta. 
It's going to be me encanta. Me encanta. They're going to, when one word ends in an E and the word next to it picks up with an E, that's going to sound like one joined word. Me encanta. Es normal. ¿Le parece difícil no tener una vida normal cuando están de gira? Ah. Oh, look, you've got parecer. Difícil. Does it does it seem find it hard? Find it hard. hard. Yeah. Does it seem hard to whom? To you guys. To the two. To of you. you guys. Less. Does what seem hard to you guys? Not doing what? Because we have no normal life. Normal life when you're yeah. when you're on tour. When you're on tour. When you're on the road. Les parece difícil means do you find it hard? Mm -hmm. A mí me aburre mi vida normal, así que prefiero las giras. Me aburre. Me aburre. Normal life is boring for me. Is boring for me. Me aburre. It bores me. ¿Trabajar juntas en la gira? Oh, did you enjoy working juntas together en la gira? Les, wow. les, 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 les gustó, les, les gustó, les aburrió, les gustó, les gustó, les gustó, sí, me gustó, la actitud de Valentina fue muy profesional. And no, this is not me gusto, it's me gustó, me gustó, and that's a really subtle thing, so let's hear them say that again. Sí, me gustó, la actitud de Valentina fue muy profesional. Me gustó, me gustó, it's going to go that fast. So she's not going to, me gustó, me gustó, me gustó. I like it. And yeah. the punch is on the end. So I liked it. Me gustó. I See? Like it. Me gustó. A mí me parece emocionante que Paulina me diera una oportunidad. Ah. Give me an opportunity. And a mí is a clue. Me, me, me pareció. Emocionante, emocionante. Que Paulina no. me diera una oportunidad, oportunidad. A mí me pareció emocionante. Uh, it seemed exciting to me that Paulina uh, had given me an opportunity, a chance. The way we express the idea of chance is oportunidad. Oportunidad that she gave me a chance. Don't worry about the me diera because you don't have to speak using that, but that means that she gave me a chance. Este contrato, chicas. Ah, this contract? Les, Les convene. He's talking to the two of them. Yeah. Um, but not to us, he's talking to them. He's talking to them. See, sí. convenir quiere decir como to be convenient, to be good for you. And in this case, he is trying to talk them into doing this, not as he didn't have money to pay them separately, right? So uh, this contract is a good thing for you gals. Les conviene. Les atrae la idea de un disco juntas y otra gira el próximo verano. Les atrae. Les atrae. Les atrae. Uh, atraer es attract. Traer by itself means to bring. Atraer is to attract. Atraer. Les atrae. And it's singular, la idea es singular. Los plazos, Miguel. Los plazos. Oh, plazos. ¿Qué son plazos? Plazos are terms. Mm -hmm. Oh, plazos. Terms. Me preocupan. Mm -hmm. Me preocupan. Ah. Mm -hmm. Me preocupan los plazos. Oh, the terms uh, worry me. Mucho tiempo, querida. Podemos cambiar los plazos. No te preocupes. Yeah. Uh, got a lot of time left. Don't worry. But who's got a lot of time left? So we yeah. got to figure, is it nos quedan or nos queda? Mm -hmm. We have a lot of time. What is the thing that's left? 
Time. 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 Nos queda mucho tiempo. Nos queda. Nos queda. Nos queda. Nos queda mucho tiempo. We've got lots of time left. So Nos even over. though it's lots of time, it's singular. Time. Tiempo. Tiempo es singular. Sí. Claro. Sí. Plazos no es singular. Tiempo sí es singular. Okay. Uh, nos queda. Yeah, we got a lot of time. Don't worry about that, girls. ¿Les gustaría firmar el contrato la próxima semana? Ah, firmar. Firmar. Sign. Sign. Exacto. Uh, would you like to sign the contract next week? Les gustaría. Les gustaría. ¿Por qué no es les gustaría? Because to an sign is a verb. It's an infinitive. Mm -hmm. Right. When you do an action, es singular. Una acción es singular. Y aquí, gustaría es would like. En vez de you like to sign, you would like. Would like es gustaría. Ok, bien. Tomar decisiones tan rápidamente, Miguel. Pero sí, cuenta conmigo. Yeah, I find it hard and... Me cuesta. Me cuesta literally means it costs me. So that's it. And it's a way of, it is a way, it is not the only way, but it is a way of saying, ah, yeah, that costs me some effort. You know, we might say that costs me some effort. So, me cuesta tomar decisiones. It costs me to make a decision. Tomar una, oh, de, tomar decisiones es take decisions no make decisions decimos en inglés make a decision en español no es hacer no 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 decisiones tomar decisiones they use tomar decisiones to express the idea of make decisions so me cuesta it's hard for me yo también nuestros planes del futuro chicos <laughs> <laughs> ah, nuestros planes del futuro. I'm excited about. Mm. Me emocionan. Me emocionan. Me emocionan because we've got planes. Planes, sí. A ver, ok. Ok, muy bien. Vamos a ver, uh, vamos a seguir con la práctica de parecer. De parecer, y vamos a empezar aquí. I'm going to send you off very, very soon into rooms, but I want to, before we, I send you off into work in separate little groups, um, and I only want you to work through here, where it says stop here, don't go there. <laughs> We're just doing stop parecer, here. because parecer is used so, so, so much. So, so, so much. And I want you to work on the first two segments now. It's not the whole gob. We're going to look at appearance with a noun and impersonal. It seems with a description. Okay. So you're going to have a noun in that first segment, and you're going to have a description of some kind. It may be just an adjective, it may be a little sentence. Where you get to the K part, you need a little sentence. Entonces, por ejemplo, en número siete, en number seven, parece que hace mucho viento. It seems like it's really windy. When you got parece que, you need a mini sentence. But keep it simple. Parece que, and talk about some weather event. It seems like it's gonna rain. It seems like it's hot, seems like it's cold, seems like it's windy, seems like it's sunny, seems like it's good weather, that's really general. Seems like it's bad weather, that's really general. But you need a whole little mini sentence after que. Ocho, we need a mini, mini sentence after the a que nosotros. We need a mini sentence, que el virus. Okay, uh, we need something about the virus. Uh, 
Okay, so you're only doing up through number nine, numero nueve. See, ¿Sí? entienden? Mm -hmm. Hay alguna pregunta? Any question about how you are changing those? Something that's come to that you need a little coaching on before you go into small practice? No, no. I think so. No. Nada. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Muy bien. Uh, do you want me to send a picture of these questions in to follow you into the Zoom rooms or not? I I don't need it. I have. I don't need it. No. I no. no. Good. Okay. Bien. Magnífico. Ok, bueno, vamos a ver. Necesitamos quizás cuatro cuartos, más o menos. A ver, voy a cambiar una cosita. Uh, eso no, eso no. Ok, muy bien. Ok, ah, bueno, practiquen, por favor. Do, uh, uh, un momentito, no. Tengo que añadir un cuarto. I need to add one room. Y aquí. I want some nice, really small, manageable groups. Y sí, ok. Vale. Excelente. Bueno, quizás mm, siete, ocho minutos. Sí. ¿Qué les parece? What do you think? ¿Qué les parece? What do you think? Ocho. Ah, bien. Bueno. Bien. Ok. Ok. A ver, there you go. Hit your join button. Just say one of these.
Muy bien. ¿Y cómo les fue? How did it go? Bueno. Unos ejemplos. ¿Tienen ustedes unos ejemplos de, de esta práctica? Como por ejemplo, yo, yo puedo decir, uh, puedo decir, por ejemplo, aquí, a uh, mi jefe parece un santo. My boss seems like a saint. Mi jefe parece un monstruo. My boss is a real monster. Ok, Kathleen. Pregunta. Sí, sí. Mi jefe parece preocupar. Oh, preocupar no. Parece. Uh, I prefer that you used a noun with these. You could. Now, it would make total sense for you to use an adjective here too. Mm -hmm. That would make sense. We did use nouns. Mi jefe parece preocupado. 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 Mi, mi jefe parece preocupado. And if you didn't use a noun, but you put an adjective in, don't worry with it. Just go with it. We want to get ideas. ¿sí? Mm -hmm. Queremos compartir ideas aquí. Mi, mi jefe parece preocupado o mi jefe parece un monstruo. <laughs> ¿Qué más? ¿Qué más? Uh, pregunta, por favor. Sí, sí, sí. Tres, uh, pronunciation, na nave. 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 Gracias. Nave. Gracias. La B chica es como B, pero no es B, es B. <laughs> nave. Nave. Nave espacial. Nave espacial es spaceship. Spaceship. Sí, bien. Ok, vale. Uh, ¿Ideas con uno, dos o tres? Mm, ¿Some ideas you want to share? ¿Unos ejemplos? Share yours. What, for the rest of the group? Oh, I'll do it. Yes. Susana, do it. bien, private. gracias. Mine's private. I, I, <laughs> oh, I bet I know where you're going with that, Pat. Uh, <laughs> Fred, has Fred, has a great one. Fred has a very discreet one. Yeah. I said la nave especial de besos uh, para ser un champignon gigantesco. Ah, gigantesco. Champignon. Gigante. Champignon. Champignon es como mushroom. Mushroom. <laughs> un champignon gigante. Giga, gigante. Gigante es más fácil, ¿sí? Okay. Yeah, yeah sí. you want to go with, you know, gigantesco. Sí, se puede decir, you could say, sí, pero gigante es muy fácil. That rolls off the tongue a little bit easier, ¿sí? Okay. Un, un, sí. Yeah, I know. There are a lot of nasty jokes about that one, aren't there? Okay. Yeah. Uh, bien, 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 bien. Uh, algo más, algo más. Uh, Fred, Federico, Federico, yeah. dinos. So, does this work? Um, parece que todos estamos pensando what everybody's thinking. <laughs> ah, parece que el número ocho, Federico. Parece que nosotros estamos pensando en, estamos pensando en lo que los otros contemplan, no sé. Uh, uh, try to whittle it down to something a little bit simpler to express. Parece que nosotros, ah, Tengo una sugerencia. I've got a suggestion, Fred. Parece que nosotros estamos pensando, we're thinking, en la misma idea. Oh, the same, oh, the same idea. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Try okay. to keep it simpler only because when you're trying to force yourself to speak with an original idea, the simpler mm. you keep it, the easier it will be for that to roll off your tongue. So the, the que todos is what I should pitch, but, but add something after estamos pasando. Que todos están pensando. I, yeah, that what. Oh, okay. Oh, que, que, que nosotros estamos pensando what we're thinking about. Sí. Because they don't have about. I mean, we don't have a No. Problem. Oh. 
Because he think, was trying to think say. Think about, ah, uh, bien. Think about es pensar en. Ah. Ah. Hay muy importante para expresar la idea de think about. No se usa la palabra about en español. About sobre o no. Mm -hmm. ah, eh, pensar es un verbo muy específico. Pensar is a really specific verb. When you want to express think about, it must be expressed in with the idea of en. Pensar en. Mm. To think on. It's kind of like saying think on that. You know, once in a while you hear people express that idea in English, in English, see, think on it. I need some time to think on it. Uh, if you've ever heard anybody use that expression, it's kind of like yeah. that. Pensar en. Pensar, when you want to say think about, needs that little preposition en. How do you know? You just have to know. <laughs> From hearing a bunch of examples. See? Pensamos, por ejemplo, pensamos en, pensamos mucho en la economía. Pensamos, pensamos en uh, uh, la alegría de Thanksgiving, Día de Acción de Gracia, ¿sí? Pensamos en nuestra familia eh, durante uh, uh, el día feriado. We think about our family on the holiday. Pensamos en nuestra, uh, nuestros problemas con, uh, con este verbo. <laughs> We are thinking about our problems with this verb. <laughs> Pensar en. Pensamos en el futuro. Pensamos en el pasado. Pensamos en, en la dificultad de hablar. Okay. Pensamos en, sí, pensamos en la política. We think about politics, lo que sea, whatever. Okay, I got that so far, but if I wanted to say we are thinking about, it's pens, uh, pensamos en... I can't use sobre. What what do I use? N. Oh, just N? N. Oh, pensamos N. Okay. Eso es todo. That's N. it. Okay. Pensamos N. Exacto. <clears throat> pensamos N. Sí. Muy bien. Okay. Vale. And let me bring up the full screen so I can use chat box here if I need to do that. Okay. Uh, bueno. Okay. Otras ideas. Any other things you would like to share? Examples you would like to share. Ejemplos que quieren compartir. Oh, no. I, I just had a question, Marilyn. I wanted to say today is going to be blah, blah, blah. So would I say ba, a, ser? Do you always have to use a if you're using ear? Even if it's followed by a verb? I mean, by an infinitive? Yes. Okay. Yes. See. Sí, sí. Okay. Gracias. But now, careful. If you are talking about whether, mm -hmm. ah, cuidado. Ah, whether yeah. uses specific verbs. So let's think about that a little bit. Um, I think today it's going to rain, or I, or I, it seems, it seems that it's going to rain. Parece que va a llover. Llover. Bueno, uh, it seems like it's going to be hot. Parece que uh, hace calor. Parece que hace calor. Sí. And we need to use hace calor. We cannot say va a hacer caluroso. Going to be. We, oh, yeah. So we got to watch for that a little bit. Parece que va a hacer viento. Va a ser, hacer, H-A-C-E-R. Va a hacer. We use this a lot. I put it in the chat box. We use this, uh, we use this verb uh, a lot okay. with weather. Not 100% of the time. Not 100% of the time. But often, it is a frequently used verb with uh, uh, yeah, weather things. See, sí, Catalina. Oh, OK, so I have a question. I had, parece que nunca va a enfriarse este otoño. Because I wrote it a week ago. So it seems like would, it's never going to cool down. Would you need to use uh, us? I would make it simpler than that because when you're speaking, you're not going to come up with that no. many words. No, seriously. 
the average person beginning to speak is going to have trouble cobbling together that many verbs. So I'm going to type down in the chat box what I would say for that. Uh, parece, uh, uh, parece que nunca va a ser fresco. Use a simple phrase. Keep it simple. And that way it's more likely to roll off your tongue. Awesome. Enfriarse is a great word. I don't want to encourage you to not <laughs> learn great words, but what's going to really come to your brain? Is it easier to say hace fresco? Oh, see, is it easier to say hacer fresco, get cool? But but because we use hace uh, fresco, would I need to say hace enfriar? If and then enfriar more has the idea of get cold, okay, but, Not which is be, like cool off, right? Yeah. Cooling off is what I was. I said cool down. fresco is to be cool, not cold, but cool. Cool. And enfriar really carries more with it an implication of like something you would put in the refrigerator. <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. to make it be that. Yeah. Uh, um, so, uh, parece que nunca hace fresco, o parece que nunca va a hacer fresco. It's never going to get cool. You're going to remember that way faster than trying mm -hmm. to figure out enfriarse and, gee, is it reflexive and is it this and is it that? So, always try. So, part of our, uh, part of our goal with doing this practice is to keep this in simpler terms so that it mm -hmm. will come off your tongue when you want to speak it. You can actually say it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, because okay, you read it and you know exactly what it says, but if you gotta say it, that's a different thing. See, es otra cosa. Es otra cosa es más difícil. Es mucho más difícil. And it's easier to remember a short chunk than a great big string together and it's great. I don't wanna, I'm gonna, I don't wanna knock highfalutin words. They're good. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, for what you, when you want to speak something, you want to keep it as simple as you can. Okay, uh, I must, I must. Uh, Catalina, so, Kathleen, you had something there? Um, yeah, you had said today something. So parece que hoy va a, uh, can you say that? Sí, sí, claro, sí. Muy bien, sí. Hoy es un detalle es específico, sí. Um, and I had another question. Um, oh, I spelled it wrong. Is va ese lluvia the same as va llover? Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. A ver. Uh, ooh, that would seem convoluted to somebody. So if you want to say, it seems like it's going to rain. Yeah. Parece que va a llover. This is the oh, really the only way people are going to say it. ¿sí? Parece que va a llover. Okay. Parece que va a llover, que parece que va a llover. It seems like it's going to rain. Oh, oh. Um, or they might express it this way. Parece que... Maybe... Parece que vamos a tener lluvia. Maybe we're going to have rain. Maybe. But... Hmm. Va a llover, that's what's going to roll off somebody's tongue. Va a llover, going to rain. Going to rain. Going to rain. Va a llover, that is the best. Es, es la mejor expresión, va a llover. ¿Bien? Va a llover, va a nevar, it's going to snow. Uh, sí, va a ser mucho calor, it's going to be really hot. Algo así, something like that. Okay, y más, ¿no? Oh no. Enrico. Can I say for number seven, todos, todos los días son perfectos, comma, ni frío o nunca color? Oh, ni frío. Ni fr nunca. Oh. Say nunca first. All, all the days are perfect. It's neither cold nor hot. I mean, was... can I say ni frío without hace? And then can ni I say, hace frío, ni hace calor. Yes, ni, ni. Ni, ni. Ni hace, ni, ni. Ni, ni. Okay. Ni, ni hace frío, ni hace calor. 
Okay, and explain. Or somebody might say, no hace frío ni hace calor. Okay, and, and explain to me why I can't use somewhere in there, nunca. You could. Si oh. se puede. <laughs> that never happens to sí. me. Sí, <laughs> sí, se puede. Sí. Okay. Uh, uh, parece que ni va a ser. Uh, uh, uh. Parece que nunca. Parece que nunca. But probably the easiest way is to lead off with that nunca. Parece que nunca va a ser frío ni va a ser calor. Bien. Sí. Okay. Bien. Okay. Bueno, hay otros o otras preguntas. Hay otras. Nada. Nada. Realmente. Ok. Ok. Vale. Vamos a practicar pronto, pronto con uh, dos categorías más. Dos categorías más. Y voy a compartir ahora la página original que tenemos aquí. Uh, Parecer con adjetivo. And I want you to specifically put an adjective in here. Uh, but now we are going to have to conjugate that verb parecer for whatever the thing or the person, you know, who, who's the subject of that sentence. Coyotes. ¿Cómo oh. se dice el verbo? Los, los coyotes. Uh, parecen. Parecen, porque mm. es plural. Esta planta, this plant. Parece. Parece. Parece, sí. And now, pareces. It's going to be you. talking to somebody you're addressing as you. You <laughs> seem a certain way. You seem tired. You seem pretty. You seem worried. You seem happy, lo que sea, whatever it may be. Mm. ¿Sí? Bien. And notice, she gave you in the video also, some people prefer to use as an alternative instead of pareces, te ves. Te ves looks like it means you look at yourself, but it doesn't really mean that. Te ves is used to say you look a certain way. Por ejemplo, Ah, te ves muy bonita. Sí. Patricia, te ves muy bonita en azul. O violeta. Lo que sea el color. Whatever that color may be. See? ¿sí? You look really pretty. See? ¿sí? Ah, te ves muy bien. You look really good. You look well. Te ves muy bien. Te ves muy bien. Ah, uh, te ves muy cansada. Wow, you look really tired. Te ves muy cansada. And there, even though I know te ves is a reflexive verb, it is a common substitute for pareces. Some people may choose to say pareces or may choose to say te ves. You look a certain way. Okay? Entienden? Understand that? Uh, that is a flip-flop. They can use either one. Bien. Um, ok. Uh, bien. Y la vista. Oh, the view from the mountain. The view from the mountain seems a certain way. Sí. Bien. Uh, when you get down to 14, 15, 16, now you need an honest, good, and reflexive. So let's type in here so you can see it as we're doing it. If I say I look like somebody, I need a straight off reflexive verb. Yo, me, ¿cómo se dice? Yo me, me parezco. Yo me parezco. Yo me parezco. Ah, I have to have an ah. I look like somebody. And now I'm going to name that person. Because remember, if I say I look like so and so, that so and so is a human being, and I need the word a ah in front of a person receiving action. 
me parezco a mi mamá, me parezco a mi hermana, me parezco a mi hija, etcétera. Bien, bien. Ok, if you're talking about sobrinos, nephews and nieces, o nietos, grandkids, o hijos, children. ¿Cuál es la forma de parecerse? Se parecen. Se parecen. Se parecen. And we need that word ah when we name who they look like. Okay. And we had a question on 16. So I'm going to give you a little clue here. 16 will be a little bit different than the other two. See? Se diferencia al número 14, se diferencia al número 15. It is a little bit different. If I want to say the Hemsworth brothers look like each other, the mm -hmm. easiest way to say that is just los hermanos Hemsworth. Se parecen. Se parecen. We don't need anything else. Okay. And oh. that can be by itself. But there is something you can do. And so contemplate that. Can you say like each other? Oh, you can. Se parecen is enough. But you can tag something on. So when you go off, see if you can figure out what that little other something is that you could tag on to the end of se parecen. Bien, okay. Vale, we good with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, bueno. Creo que cinco minutos. I think we need more like maybe six, seven minutes for this one. A little bit, a little bit, a uh, little bit shorter. Okay. A ver. Uh, and hit your join buttons.
Excelente. Aquí vienen todos. Here comes everybody. Mm -hmm. Muy bien. Bueno, ¿hay preguntas o ideas que, que quieren compartir? Any ideas you want to share? Any examples you want to share? ¿O tienen preguntas? Preguntas. Oh, ok, preguntas. Bueno, sí. Uh, primero, primero con uh, uh, las dos Susanas. One Susana. Give me. I got Susana, dueling you, Susana, you go. And then I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> This is on 15. Um, okay. What I'm trying to say is, um, Susana, Two of my three granddaughters look alike. And I had dos de mis tres nietas se parecen. Is that, do I need something else like ah? Uh, Perfecto. Oh, no. that's enough? Wow. Whoa. Basta. Whoa, Susana. Basta. OK. Otra pregunta. La otra, Susana, ahora. Um, okay, so, oh my gosh, you know what, you better go to somebody else. Everybody okay, está on. bien. Okay, somebody, alguien más, somebody else. Uh, Patricia, sí, dime. Uh, number 13, it's just, what I wrote is real long and complex, and I bet you could do it better. Okay, la Vista de la Montana, I was trying to say, para se valor más que el precio de la habitación. So the view is worth the price of the room, I was thinking. Oh. La vista, oh. perdón. Oh, la vista desde la montaña. Oh, ok, ok, otra vez. I, I, I kind of lost you there. La vista desde la montaña. The view from the mountain. It is worth the price of the room, is what I was thinking. Oh, you cannot use parecer at all. Oh, parece. Pare, oh, bueno, ok, ok, quizás. Parece que vale la pena. O vale uh, el precio. That's what I tried to write, but I guess I had the infinitive. Vale I la pena, vale el precio. Okay. Um, sí, ok, bien, okay. bien. Bueno, sure hay más, hay más. Más preguntas. Ok, Susana, sí. Ok, the Zarkas have calmed down over here. Um, <laughs> I was trying to say that uh, I do not look like my sisters. Would I say no me parezco a mis hermanas? Exacto. Okay. No me parezco a mis hermanas. I okay. don't look like my sisters. No me parezco a mis hermanas. Okay. Any idea of can we add something extra to this idea of los hermanos Hemsworth se parecen? I don't know. Can we add a little like each other on the end? Is there a way to do that? Que, que Something you... like un a... Uh... El otro or something yeah. like that. Ah, muy bien. Ok, voy a escribirlo en chat room. Uh, los hermanos uh, Hemsworth, and I'm just going to abbreviate that, se parecen uno al otro. Uno al otro. Uno al otro is something you can add on to say. Oh, con, para, para mujeres. Una, una uh, a la otra, you know. Yeah, una a la otra. If you, you could make it feminine. Okay. Pero se parecen uno al otro. Uno al otro is another way to say one another. One mm. to the other. Okay. But... Pero no es necesario. You really can't skip all of that. But, you know, mm. somebody may add it in to be very emphatic. Mm -hmm. Bien? Sí? Ok. But uh, could sí. you also say los hermanos Hemsworth se parecen hermanos? They look like brothers? I mean, how we in English say, oh, they look like oh, brothers. Oh, let's think about that. They look like brothers. They look like brothers. I'm going to go way back to the top of the list here, Juanita. Uh oh. It's like using it with a noun. Parecen hermanos. Oh, the brothers. Okay. Mm. Parece, wow, they seem like parecen hermanos. That's using it like that and probably not reflects it. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Notice how, isn't that subtle? Yes, it is. Es, es yeah. una cosita, es una cosita muy, muy, muy pequeña, muy chiquita, pero. See, sí, muy sutil, very, very subtle kind of change, but something that you can do. Okay, excelente. Wow, um, you know what? We're going to come back 
to our uh, segment with the sunglasses the next week. I do want to show you something. In December. In December. Me parece ridículo. Me parece ridículo decir que nos vemos en diciembre. Hombre, que ay, no, diciembre no, pero así es, así es. Bueno, okay, we'll come back to that. We'll just have some fun with that all together. Uh, I do want to show you something. Um, uy, ¿dónde fue? ¿Dónde fue? Ah, ¿a dónde fue? Okay, I want to show you something about, um, now, Sean honestos, be honest. How many of you thought it was middling to a little bit hard to listen to David y Ana? Middling to a little hard. Me. Yeah, I thought okay. they, they were, they kind of did run all their words together. You okay. Know, That's without, you hard. couldn't tell the sentence way. ended and the next one started so right. that, yeah. It's is normal. And, and that you should know is normal. And that is something that is really good for you to aspire to, okay? And that means that some, and that means that sometimes you're going to feel like it's a fail, not that you are a failure, that it's a fail, okay? Sometimes it will feel that way. Don't be discouraged by that. You're going for the big idea, not every single word. And you are going for sometimes pausing and being thoughtful and saying, oh, I wonder what that phrase means, or can I take that apart, or is that how we would say this or that? So um, I don't know if you'll all be able to see this transcript. I'm going to try to send this as a link. I did send it to Susanna uh, as a kind of a preview, but I may send it in a written format as well in case... There is a fail on that. This, not all of their transcripts will work this way. The older ones did, but karaoke style. Here's why I want you to look at this. There, there, this particular one, and I will send you this. This particular one, I want you to notice which words start running together because it's going to let you play each little audio and it's going to light up the word they're saying as they're oh. saying it as karaoke. Ah, oh, como por magia. As yeah. Like yeah. magic. Yeah. Escuchen un momentito. So listen to this and look at the screen. It'll be easier when it's on your screen that you can absolutely follow the bouncing ball. Remember that, boy, boy am I showing my age? Yeah. Okay. Um, aquí vamos. Here we go. Y yo soy Ana. Y en este episodio queremos hablar sobre la cultura. ¿Cómo puedes invitar a alguien a algún lugar o a hacer algo en México? This podcast is made possible thanks to our patrons. Una parte importante de hablar. Una parte importante de hablar. She just has a little. Okay, so she went into her spiel. But notice, you know, like when it. you've got al, alguien, I'm going to highlight it. Alguien a un lugar. A alguien a algún lugar o hacer o hacer algo en México. Oh, that O oh is going to run into that. Eh, that O oh is going to run into that. Ah, those vowels, when you let leave off with a vowel and you leave, when you leave off, when the last letter of a word is a vowel and it transitions into a word that begins with a vowel, that's where it's going to feel the most, oh, it's running together to you. So I want to show that to you and I will send you this so that you can listen again mm -hmm. and follow along and see where those are running together. Because it's important for you to understand when things are running together, it's not that somebody is trying to rush, it's just that one vowel sound runs into the next one and they are going to slide together. This is a normal pattern of speech. We constantly do this in English and we think absolutely nothing of it. And we even think we are going very slowly, but we're really not. Even when we speak to somebody this slowly in English, it is very, very fast sounding to them. And furthermore, we say things like, hey, you gonna come? I want to go. Think of how many times in English do we not only slide sounds together, 
but we change. Are, are we going to go? How many times do you say, we, are we going to go or are we going to go? How many times do we do that in English? And we think nothing of it. And, and you try to slow it down. But yeah, you see what happens. Pueden adivinar, you can guess, pueden adivinar lo que pasa, what happens. So I'm going to send this off and I want you to listen again and to listen to how things are going to run together. We're going to play one more of these examples. Una parte importante de hablar un poco tu español con alguien más es que si tú tienes amigos o familiares tal vez lejanos que son nativos de español y que son mexicanos, puedas invitarlos a tu casa y con eso tener una conversación mucho más fluida y tal vez decirles quiero estudiar mi español por lo tanto vamos a intentar hablar más español que el otro idioma no pero no solo vamos a enseñarte okay. cómo y let me let me pause this here uh, here are little phrases I want you to notice these are words that are going to run together por lo tanto right uh, vamos a intentar vamos a intentar that's all going to run together Okay, so I already gave you a cheat list vocab list, which is separate, but I'm going to send you a transcript separately so you can kind of match them up, kind of revisit that. Do you think that is helpful? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. Because yeah. when I turned on the captions, it's not this. It's it's kind and, of an automated caption some, thing. Yes. I you agree. get a lot of garbage in there. And sometimes you get garbage in there. Yes. So sometimes when you hit the CC button, you will get garbage because, I don't know, because it's an AI thing and it isn't really somebody typing all those little words in. This is an actual transcripts, okay? But I want you to listen to Anna. And I, yes, I will say, actually, her words do run together a little bit more. So let's listen to this again. Pero no solo vamos a enseñarte cómo invitar a alguien a tu casa, sino cómo invitar a alguien a cualquier lugar. No, vamos a enseñarte cómo invitar a, cómo invitar a alguien a tu casa. You're not going to hear those little ah words as separate words. Ever. Even if somebody tries to slow down, they're not going to say those as separate words. It's going to come out as a little prolonged ah. Invitar a alguien a tu casa. So, and what really is going to sound like it's running together is this, alguien. 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 Not a, alguien. Alguien. Entienden? Understand? Sí. Yeah. See? Mm -hmm. But it is a really, really good drill for you because honestly, they do go moderate to a Moderate. I'm not going to say moderately slow. Moderate. It is a good, good listening drill to do that. So I'm going to send this off with you to listen one more time. Do you want to hear another different audio that they have, which is it's set up kind of as a, well, hmm, I might try to find one that's, I'm going to try to find one that's short because I'm asking you to listen to two things. Yeah. But uh, something relatively short. I was thinking one that was kind of fun. It was a game-oriented thing, um, quizzing your spouse, which is sort of cute and fun. Uh, I, but I want to look at the time length and make sure it's not too ridiculously long. You know, if it's like a 26-minute thing, that's going to be long. Okay, is that it? Is that a good idea? Yeah. 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 Okay, and with the extra one I send you, I will send... Um, probably also a transcript and a vocab word box. So you may want to listen once with the transcript and listen a second time just with the cheat sheet on vocabulary key mm -hmm. and see that you can get the gist and come back and we'll kind of talk about that and we'll riff off of that. We're not going to riff off the invitation thing. This is just to give you extra vocabulary to talk about how to invite people. Okay, but the next one will have actual information we can talk about and have conversation about. Está bien. Sí. 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 Okay, and, and my thought was, I think I'm going to do the relationship thing because it was a very cute and very fun exercise. I did it with another group and it was a big, big, big hit um, because it gives us things to talk about that are easy to talk about. 
Okay, you see? And even, even if you have trouble with some of the vocabulary, I guarantee you with the relationship one, you will get the gist. Okay. You will. <laughs> Absolutamente. Okay. Todo está bien. All good? Sí. Okay. Sí. okay. Sí. So when you go through the transcript, do notice, I know at least one point in there, boy, he's got a big parece hanging out there, a big fat parece uh, example, un ejemplo de parece que seems that. So I want you to notice how he uses that because I think it comes up in the first uh, five or 10 minutes. Okay. Y eso es todo. That I think is going to be it for tonight. Bien? Todo bien? Yeah.